video going over this uh, week three, no red ink. I'm viewing this as a student and I'm just gonna walk you through this just in case if you've been maybe kind of avoiding no red ink, um, I wanna take you through this. So we can see from this assignment, um, there are six practices and then there's like a little checkpoint at the end. So I'm gonna go back to this one even though I already had level one achieved. So you can always see first there's a lesson and then a practice. Let's look at the lesson together, okay? So you're supposed to use a comma to show a pause after a clause or phrase, all right? A clause is basically like a part of a sentence that could, could be a sentence on its own or almost be a sentence on its own. Then a phrase, we talk about that in sentence phrase word. It's, it's a little clump of words. So when clauses and phrases start sentences, they often require a reader to pause before moving on. We do this naturally when we talk, but when we talk and we pause, in writing, that means we have to use a comma. So, and then this is showing these different kinds of clauses and phrases, like a gerund phrase. That's like anything like running, speaking, walking, any ing words, that's a gerund phrase. Prepositional phrase, prepositions are words like above, below, and be behind, before, during, all right? And then subordinate clause. This is like basically when you kind of have flipped the order of a sentence, just just cause, right? Just to keep things spicy. You don't really have to remember the name of these kinds of phrases. You just have to know that like, if you pause, you have to indicate that with a comma, okay? If there is no comma, there is no pause. So without the comma, if we covered this comma, it would say running at top speed, Jean, chase down the school bus. That sounds weird. So you have to say running at top speed, Jean chased down the school bus. During the night, Lindsay dreamed she saw a UFO. Because he enjoys music, Sean bought tickets to the orchestra. So you can see like the first part of the sentence and the second part of the sentence are kind of showing cause and effect. Or this is showing, this is giving more information about time. When did Lindsay dream she saw a UFO? During the night. If you don't pause, you don't use a comma, right? Jennifer hid her lucky marbles in the bushes. That's it. Um, if I wanted to switch it and use a comma, I could say, while in the bushes, Jennifer hid her lucky marbles. All right, so don't pause if you don't need a comma. All right, that's the whole lesson for this part. So let's try it. Let's try a couple. Until I learn how to drive, Severus Snape will have to take me to soccer practice. All right, drive, Severus Snape, that's not what we mean, right? Until I learn how to drive Severus Snape will have to take me to soccer practice. Does that sound right? That doesn't sound right. Until I learn how to drive, Severus Snape will have to take me to soccer practice. So I'm going to put that comma in because I could read this whole sentence backward, this piece, and then, and then this piece. But since that order is like reversed, I got to use a comma. I could say Severus Snape will have to take me to soccer practice until I learn how to drive no comma. But because this order of like sort of effect and then cause is flipped, I have to use the comma. So that's right. Let's try another. From the top floor of the office building, Dr. Hibbert could see the entire city. Same thing. Where could he see the entire city? From the floor of the office building. So because that order is reversed, I got to use a comma. Now I'll do one more. Jake the dog updates his blog every day unless his favorite show is on, TV show is on. So I don't need a comma here because this order is how it is, right? If it were flipped and it said, unless his favorite TV show is on, comma, Jake the dog updates his blog every day. All right, so you get the idea. That's the first one. So I'm going to X out of that and I'm going to take you to the next one that I think more people are struggling with. Commas with parenthetical phrases. What's a parenthetical phrase? It's basically something that's kind of like a little like side note, sidebar, something that if you took it out of the sentence, your sentence would still function perfectly fine. It's kind of like an extra. It's like icing on a cake. A cake could still be a cake without the little decorations. So if you've got that sort of interruption in the sentence, it takes two commas, okay? So in that first, in these first practices, it was just kind of like 
two big chunks of sentence with one comma to show the split. But this is an interruption. And because it's an interruption, it's got to take two commas. So you could picture that you could lift this out and the sentence works without it. Sue warned us that the roses had thorns, right? Sue warned us that the roses, while pretty, had thorns. It would sound weird to say, Sue warned us that the roses, while pretty, had thorns. Right? You got to pause because of that interruption. But not, you don't always have to use it. Just because a sentence is long doesn't mean you have to use a comma. All right? So offset interjections with commas. An interjection, it says, it's something to show emotion. Like, whoa, holy cow, oh my goodness, would you believe it? Things like that. Uh, sometimes people might cuss, and that is a kind of an interjection, but no red ink won't use that kind. But anyway, you slice it. If it's in the middle of a sentence, because it's an interruption, two commas. If it's at the beginning, just one comma. All right, so if you've got something random that's popping up in the middle of a sentence, you've got to put commas on both sides of it, right? I went to Mikey's dinner, and he's a great cook. I went to Mikey's dinner party, and comma, Wow, comma, he's a great cook. But see, this one's at the beginning of the sentence, so you don't, so you just need one comma, right? Because you don't put a comma at the beginning of the sentence. That would be weird. All right. So let's try. Black Panther told us that the treehouse was huge and had a built-in slide. That's it. Fine. Dr. Hibbert showed us that the penguins were playful and liked to eat fish. That's fine, right? Because this isn't a side note. We're just learning two things about the penguins, that the penguins were playful and the penguins like to eat fish. Um, so there's, there's nothing like, there's nothing that we have to separate. Alex finished his soda and believe it or not, balanced it on top of my eight foot tower of cans. Believe it or not, right? This is like kind of random. So Alex finished his soda and balanced it on top of my eight foot tower of cans believe it or not. So since I believe it or not, is this like random interruption in the sentence, I've got to put a comma on both sides. And let's go one more. Cedric Diggory, by the way, ordered a new parachute online. Since it's an interruption, we put a comma on both sides. If we flip the order and it said, by the way, Cedric Diggory ordered a new parachute online, then it would just take one comma. One more. Wow, Harry Potter can say the alphabet backwards while standing on his head. That sounds good. Because the wow is at the beginning. Solid. No, I didn't know Jake the dog collects light bulbs. Awesome. All right, let's move on to another. I'm going back here just so I can see where I'm at with my pathway. This one's not done yet. Oh, because I have to get through this one to get to the next one. But I can do the lesson because I do want to just kind of show you all these lessons. All right, commas separating adjectives. So this is to do this. It says to show that the words have equal weight. Like they're all just describing things about the noun. This is why we did that work on parts of speech in the first quarter and into the second quarter. Because it's really hard to tell if a sentence is built right or if it's got some issues, unless you're familiar with those parts of speech. So you could say, Lou plucked an apple from the tree. Fine. Lou picked a juicy apple from the tree. Lou's, Lou picked a juicy, sweet apple. So since we've got two adjectives, you got to put a comma in between. But you don't put a comma in between the last adjective and the noun because that would sound awkward. Comma makes a pause. You don't pause between what you're describing and the describing word, right? You wouldn't say, Lou pit plucked a juicy, sweet apple from the tree, right? Sweet apple, all right? Or you could say, and, it sounds okay, but once you've got a lot of adjectives, you don't wanna say juicy and sweet and red and big, right? So then you're gonna use commas. No commas, three delicious apples. So, you can say that because it, it, there's just like in English, well, in every language, there's kind of an order that you go in. Delicious three sounds weird. 
three and delicious also sounds weird. So you just say three delicious apples. And if you feel like, if you feel a little bit frustrated, if you're like, well, that just seems like the rule doesn't always apply. It just seems about like how it sounds. That's very true because a lot of our language is spoken and shared by speaking and listening. So a lot of the things that, that come into the rules of writing um, begin by the way we speak. All right. Do not use a comma between an adjective and the noun it describes. So again, warm sweater, long winter, beautiful garden. And then again, three delicious apples. If they don't have equal weight, it's kind of like those are different things. Like this is like a count, how many apples, and this is what kind of an apple is it. Does that make sense? So three delicious apples is not the same as saying delicious, juicy. Those are like both just like adjectives that describe. And this is an adjective that gives you just a count, a number. So that's uh, the lesson for that one. And then commas for direct address. I'll show you that, but we kind of went over this. Um, by direct address, it means like when you're talking to somebody in a sentence. Usually that's in the second person. So you're going to tell when you're going to need to use a comma because the sentence will often have the word you or you all, right? Like I'm telling you, Jameson, that was the biggest cat I've ever seen. Carol, do you know where my water skis are? So just understand that if you're using commas to set off a person's name, it's not just because you always have to do that with names. It's, it's to show the pause that happens when you are directly talking to a person, even if it's like you're writing to a person. So don't use commas when mentioning a name if you're just talking about them, okay? So you use commas to set off names when you're talking to a person, not about a person, right? Larry met up with Gwendolyn at the music festival. No commas needed because you just, you just run through it, no pause. But if I say, Carol, do you know where my water skis are? You don't say, Carol, do you know where my water skis are? That sounds awkward. It sounds like you're in a hurry. So when you're directing your speech to a person and calling them by name, that takes a comma. The reason why there's two commas here and only one comma here is same rule as before. This is super standard. If something is like an interruption, an address uh, at the beginning of a sentence, then it's just one comma. But if it interrupts in the middle of the sentence, that takes two commas. Last little lesson is commas to avoid confusion. Commas tell a reader where to pause in the sentence, helping to avoid confusion, right? Because when we pause, then that shows that, that that's like a particular phrase and that set of words has a, a closer relationship with each other than another part of the sentence, right? Like outside, the sprinklers just went off. For most, the year is already finished. That's like a kind of a weird short way of saying like for most of us, the year is already finished, right? So you have to pause so that it doesn't sound confusing. You're not sure what is being referred to outside the sprinklers. That sounds like you're referring to like inside the sprinkler, outside the sprinkler. When you use that word, the comma there, that's saying like outside as in like not inside, outside the sprinklers just went off. Or you can see if you switch the order of words, a lot of times then that eliminates the need for a comma. Why would you, why would you use a comma then? You might say, well, like, why don't I just switch the order of a sentence? That's true, um, but variety is a spice of life. Just like I don't like to eat the same thing for dinner every night or even every week. Um, writing just kind of sounds better to our ears if there's different kind of sentences, shorter, longer, medium size, and they're made in different ways so that it sounds less repetitive and it helps people to keep paying attention. So don't use unnecessary commas. Uh, it, honestly, sometimes then like we're gonna get to this in, in, in our next no reading practice, but sometimes people use commas where you should use a period and start a new sentence. Um, but yeah, all right. So I enjoy running and jumping with Max. That's it. You don't need a comma there. If you say, Max, I enjoy running and jumping, like you're talking to him, then you would say, then you would use a comma. All right. So that's just a little bit uh, uh, on this stuff on commas for clarity. 
for anybody who isn't able to get to office hours. Hope 